Hello my soccer universe and yeah, sorry, I only get now to talk about the women's Euro. Uh, as I said, due to my vacation, I actually did watch the first uh, match day and uh, half of the second until I left. So it was more or less the first five, six days of the tournament. I actually watched rather closely, but in Bulgaria I really could not watch a thing. Although I really, really wanted to uh, watch Austria and I'm wearing Austria because uh, to be honest, they are probably one of the uh, more positive surprises of the tournament and the general feeling around here is that while well, 2017 when we made um, the uh, semi-final rather unexpectedly uh, every, uh, it, it was important for the standing of uh, women's soccer in Austria but now this tournament was not only a little bit of confirmation of what was happening back then but it was also very important for the standing of Austria in women's football that they are now considered as one of the better uh, European teams. No, they are not the cream of the top, but they did not get slaughtered by England, although I wholly expected that. They actually held their own. And also against Germany, they were very, very well in the game. And why I mention this, because as you can see up there, it's those two teams that make the final. And they were, uh, bar none, the best teams of the comp 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 competition overall. Although uh, England were a little bit shaky, Germany actually not, never really that shaky overall. But then uh, when I said England were shaky against Spain, on the other side, they had probably the, one of the most um, impressive performances of the Tour Tour the tournament. So, you know, give, give, give and take. We'll talk, of course, about the final uh, in a little bit. But from what I could see, actually the standard of the game was quite good. Yes, it is by far not as physically uh, as the men's game. This was uh, quite ob obvious, but what I really like about it is this kind of family-friendly atmosphere. Uh, yes, you don't get... Uh, it is nice to have a little bit more of this intimidating at atmosphere at times, but especially at a uh, tournament... Uh, a, a, a national team tournament it should be a celebration and this is where uh women's football does it much much better you don't there's no talk even if it's playing a year ago we were, we were talking about misbehaving fans left and right and whistling of the national anthem nothing like that here and it makes it so much uh, more worthwhile watching yes um i have to say for the first one or two days I admit I had to readjust myself, but once you can appreciate what is happening, happening there, there's actually quite some amazing stuff going going on. So I'm really looking forward to that final tomorrow. So what I wanna uh, do now is that I wanna go through the entire tour to tournament and just give you a little bit of my um, thoughts, especially of the games that I watched and then the feeling of, of, overall. I wanna summarize the group gr the groups, which it is very interesting to see how then. Uh, the prediction was for the tournament going forward. Then we'll look uh, back at the knockout stage and then we'll finish with a teeny tiny preview of that final. Let's jump right in. Match day one. It started in Old Trafford with England playing Austria in a game where um, I think Austria... You you weren't sure. I mean, and I'm talking now purely of the Austrian first You weren't sure after that game. Um... Was this a good result because you didn't get slaughtered by England, who were overwhelming favorites? Or did you realize too late that you actually might get something from that game? I really thought that uh, up until the first 50 minutes, also, also, also was really well in the game. And then with the first mistake, they conceded. Then uh, before the half, probably they should have conceded the second one. But um, the longer the game went, England couldn't kick in the next gear. And Austria just were defensively sound. But really it's too late. Then they could have gotten something from that one. Norway easily over Northern Ireland. Spain uh, look a little bit more labored than the result for one. But, you know, with Spain uh, missing the two best players, uh, all the good chances that everyone said they are the big favorites, this more or less coming with Poteas out, was never going to happen. I really was looking forward to Germany against Denmark. I expected a tight game. It never was. This was, this was the first mark that Germany put down. This was the first time that you said, okay, this England was probably good for the tournament that they didn't beat Austria by a lot because you know um, you needed uh, to kind of get them. When you got the three, the three, three, three points to, to get rolling, but Germany really put down the marker. We are here and we are strong. 
I really enjoyed Portugal against Switzerland. Switzerland, after five, 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 five minutes, Switzerland were up five, two nil. And I was, I thought, yeah, the game, the game is already, but Portugal fought back and got a very deserved two to draw and probably could have even won it. Um, the Netherlands Sweden game, I think, was an early classic where, um, Sweden were better in the first half, Netherlands were better in the second half. I think that's uh, how it could go. So it was an over good draw. Uh, another game that could have gone really either way was Belgium against Iceland. Um, I think Belgium fought back in that one. Uh, but that was uh, rather en 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 entertaining. But I really expect a lot from France against Italy. And the first 10, 15 minutes, Italy could have taken the lead. That would have changed the game. Even when they were 1 0 down, they had a chance. There was like the first 3, 15 minutes, it was a rather even affair. But then France just annihilated them. And I think it was a 4-0, or 5-0 leader to have a 4-0, I think, was, 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 was an absolute destruction. And Italy completely fully. It was, it was reminiscent of the famous uh, Barcelona-Bayern 2-8 game. Uh, second match day, Austria got the 2-0 over Northern Ireland. Um, it was not a glorious victory, but it was a victory. And you could see the crazy gang that the Austrian team is. Team spirit really high. And at that point, uh, I, the funny thing is that many in uh, Austria said, yeah, um, what does this mean? Yeah, we probably need to beat Norway, but um, Norway is a really, really good team. And you know, if England would beat them 3 0, maybe, maybe, maybe 8 0. England just rolled over Norway. And at that point, it was pretty clear that Austria is going to have a really good chance of, of, of the. Uh, it was surely that you had the feeling, yeah, maybe it's a wounded animal and they still have all the class up top. But this was another disaster for Norway. The last years were already a disaster. This uh, 8 0, the highest defeat that England ever had. Uh, that, that Norway ever had in the tournament. Norway are uh, royalty in that. England, super, super impressive in that one. I gotta say, this was a super performance by them, to be honest. Um, Denmark, Finland, uh, late goal to make it 1-0. And then and Germany, Spain, another super performance by Germany. I think Spain played it too complicated. That's that's the best way I can describe it. Spain was way too complicated in playing that one. Uh, they had good chances and they should have converted them, but they always tried to carry the ball into goal and, and Germany straight, straight, straight forward and, you know, every chance, every shot more or less a goal. And at that point, you knew that Germany is for real. Um, Sweden and Portugal, uh, Sweden and Netherlands then get two wins over Switzerland and Portugal, respectively. Uh, Netherlands had to had a tun tun lead. Uh, it, Portugal packed it back to 2-2. Never, uh, but the uh, uh, Dutch uh, got the win. Uh, Italy only won one against Iceland at that point. I kind of knew that Italy will not be able to repeat what they did at the World Cup. Uh, and France also, uh, rather, I want to say disappointing 2 1 over Bell, but after the great performance against it 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 Italy, I expected a little bit more. Then on the last match, and I, those I only can say I heard from these games, I didn't really see any of these games. Unfortunately, but I saw the highlights of Austria beating Norway 1-0. A thoroughly deserved, mature win for Austria. It has to, as we say, this, and this was really, really a bright spot. England having, of course, after 8-0 against um, no Norway, 5-5-0 against Northern Ireland. Really, really, really uh, be, um, uh, solid showing by them. Uh, but as I said, uh, Austria, this was this was one hoped for it, but it was never really expected that it would come this way. So a really, really good performance by Austria, I have to say. And setting up, of course, that point Germany, it was clear that they will play and setting up, of course, the classic against Germany, although not in the women's game. Germany had already won the group 3-0 against Finland. Spain needed only a draw against Den 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 uh, Denmark to get the win to through a late goal. Again, very much deserved, but it took a while. Uh, and then... Uh, group C was the last one where the group winner was not decided and it was a shootout because both Netherlands and Sweden needed to win big and both of them won big. The Netherlands took a little bit longer, but Sweden at the point had five, five minutes. So Sweden win the group. Iceland or manages, and this was now France were already, already through, then I was between the other three who will move on. Belgium wins it and Iceland get a late draw against France and it's not enough. As we will see, because in the final standings, uh, let's start a group, group, group D. So Iceland, three draws. It's not enough because Belgium has four points. One win, one loss, one draw. 
and that sees Belgium through. Uh, Sweden, uh, let's roll it back, uh, do the gold, the friends over Netherlands. Spain, uh, in, 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 in the end, a good second spot. And I said, England, Austria move on, which uh, set up then the following three. And you see also the chances uh, of winning uh, Sweden against Belgium, hugely favored. Um, England against Spain was the marquee matchup, as were kind of France, Netherlands, two really, really tight, tight ones. And Germany, of course, huge favorites over Austria. And then uh, we got, I can already say it, all of them went by uh, predictions. And we got exactly that semifinal that was here. I mean, once Spain was not winning that group, it was Germany in there. Germany, France and England against Sweden, uh, with France being favored over Germany. But you know, this was it's all pre tournament ratings and um, didn't have a way to adjust them through it. But um, it was also interesting that due to the setup of the tree, that Germany were actually at that moment favored to go on because England had a much tougher route, although uh, they were still the highest ranked team, but they had to go through Spain, a rather tough draw, and then they had to go uh, further uh, through Sweden, which were pretty uh, big teams there. So found this rather interesting as well. How did the quarterfinals go? Spain for about 80 minutes. Clearly the better team. Clearly playing, uh, giving England a hard time, taking a 1-0 lead. And then England get the equalizer and that was the momentum shifter. And with a long range shot, uh, England win it 2-1. Germany against Austria, um, classically Austrian headline. Uh, Germany wins 2-0, but we won the battle of posts 3-2, or woodwork 3-2. Yeah, I watched the highlights. Austria, with a little bit of luck, you could have taken the lead. Then you made a defensive error, you concede. You hit the uh, woodwork twice more. Uh, Germany then, I think, laid out, also hit one. And um, so, you know, it was not that, but I thought that the Austrian uh, team, when they hit the woodwork, Actually, was what they ended dangerous when German German did it. And the two, the, the, the two nil Zinsberger wanted to um, kick, kick, kick it out and pop blocks it. Yeah, it looks a little bit weird, this goal, to be honest. Having said that, I think Germany did deserve to go on, but the chances were there. Austria gave it the all and another honorable showing. Uh, as I said, when they had to play teams that were much better than them, they did rather, 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 rather well. So I uh, uh, exiting the game with the heads held high. Sweden against Belgium is super one side as a game that needed a very late goal to decide it. Uh, France against Netherlands, almost similar, but it needs an overtime penalty to, to decide it, so the holders were out. Then the Eng I saw the highlights of the England-Sweden uh, semifinal. Sweden, for the first 30 minutes, should have probably taken the lead, were really giving England a hard time. And then Beth Mead, like she was the whole tour to tournament, gets uh, a goal. Then I think they get a second. And then uh, uh, shortly after, in the second half, I, you know, it, it's all kind of a little, a little bit of a blur. Uh, and then Russo with the uh, back heel goal settles the, the game and it becomes destruction again. Although that was never for nil scoreline. This was more like a, a 2 1 game, maybe for England. I'm not saying that England were the worst team, but uh, the score should be much, much tighter. France was the first team to score against Germany, and nominally it was an own goal. Uh, Germany took the lead through Pop. Um, first half, Germany completely controlled that. that they won, uh, the goal for France, I mean, France had some chances. The goal for France was a long range shot that hit the post and then on the back of the goalkeeper and in, so technically an own goal. Uh, second half, I thought that France had a little bit more of the game. However, it's Pop who heads it home and sends Germany to the final. So uh, I don't want to say Germany was struggling as much as England did against Spain, but you know, it was not uh, a straightforward win, but it sets up uh, the dream final in many ways. I mean, Wembley final, England, Germany, Germany what more do we, do, do, do we want? And it's without all the hatred probably going on. Uh, that's, I think, the best thing ever. Uh, I think it's a really, really good final. They are, those two teams were clearly the best in the tournament. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that. I really cannot call it. Uh, I think if England scored a first goal, I think, I think it will come down to the first goal. Uh, if England scored that, that one, I think it could swing England's way. Um, Germany is a ruthless team. 
England's defense needs to be really, really uh, careful there. And that might be actually the problem for them as, as well. I'm really surprised how well Germany did in this tournament so far. Uh, my model has England, thanks to Home for the Avengers, just as a slight favorite. It's after all played on home, home, home ground. It's almost a year after England lost the final against Italy in Wembley. Let's see if it will go this time England's way. I actually, I have a... I, I would give England this light edge. But this Germany team has been so resilient and given that they had the much tougher road to the final. Yes, uh, probably the, in the groups that they were in the toughest group, they had to play Spain, they had to play Denmark. Finland was maybe a throwaway game, then they had Austria. I don't want to say it was a throwaway game, but it was a game that they were expect, expected to win. Whereas England, yeah, uh, had a much easier group that they managed quite well. Uh, they showed their grit against Spain and uh, also the class against Sweden. So give or take, very, very interesting final coming up. And I am surely, I am very much looking forward to watching this one. And I'll pro and I will definitely make a video on this one as well. Um, I'm not sure if it will, pro probably on Monday or something like that. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about the tournament so far. I said, I'm very sorry. I should, I really would have liked to cover this one closer. I just couldn't. And so the reality is I do it like a little bit like the Copa America last year. Any case, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my SOFA universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.